Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I'm Mike Lambert, I'm a fellow of the Open Group, and I am chair of the Open Group Architecture Forum, the forum that was responsible for the production of the new version of the TOGAS standard. On April the 16th, the Open Group made some significant announcements. We announced, first of all, a revised version of the TOGAS standard itself, version 9.2. We also announced something that we call the TOGAS library. This was quietly launched in the middle of last year, but we're now making a lot more of it because we think it is the most important thing that was actually delivered this year. And finally, we've introduced a new credentials program to complement the TOGAF certification program. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that towards the end of this presentation. So the structure of this session, first of all, I'm going to talk about the standard itself. What changes have we put into the TOGAF standard? And I'll look at areas like business architecture, the content framework and meta model, alignment with the ISO standard, and security. Then I want to move on and talk about the TOGAF library and the significance of that in this, with this particular release. And finally, I'll talk about the impact of this version on the TOGAF certification program, particularly TOGAF certification for people. Let's start off then by looking at the standard itself. The last time the TOGAS standard was revised was as long ago as 2011. In 2011, life was very simple. We published a big, thick book called the TOGAS standard version 9.1. We built a certification program based largely on the contents of the big, thick book. That has given us problems. That being a single monolithic standard hundreds of pages long is really difficult to update. It mixes what TOGAF suggests you really must do and guidance on usage and useful tools and techniques all into a single volume. And as I said, in trying to evolve that, we have found that that gave us a problem. Almost as soon as we published version 9.1, we had a plan. We had a strategy. And our vision was that we would separate the document up into a much smaller normative core containing a, the essence of the TOGA framework, supplemented by a number of documents providing guidance, and one or more documents doc defining tools and techniques. The idea being that each of these could evolve in their own time scale, and we didn't need to move them forward in lockstep. We had a basic principle, and the basic principle was nothing was going to go away accidentally. Anything in version 9.1 would either remain in the normative core or be extracted to a freestanding guide or white paper, or if it was going to be deleted, it would be an explicit decision. There would be a proposal, and there would be consensus around that. Well, we set out on this path, and we actually found that this was something which was really difficult for us to achieve in one step. And in fact, two or three years ago, we realized that this was going far too slowly. And importantly, there were areas of the standard that needed to be refreshed. There were one or two errors. There were some areas which were a little bit out of date and needed modernization. There are areas where we really could do with better information. So we adopted an incremental approach. And the important thing about version 9.2 is that it is the first stage of this strategic restructure. So there's new material in it, and I'm going to talk about that in a couple of slides time. But we have started the process of moving towards that strategic target. So some of the guidance material has been extracted into freestanding guides. And in doing it, we've taken advantage of the opportunity to revise that material. 
some parts of those guides remain part of the body of knowledge for certification, and I will talk a little bit more about that later. The chapters describing the architecture development method have been internally restructured to put the normative material first and the guidance later. That will help us as we continue the approach of separating out the, um, the content into these three different categories. And that process will continue with future versions. So I showed you the TOGAF body of knowledge in 2011. The TOGAF body of knowledge in 2018 is very much richer. We do have the standard sitting in the middle, the TOGAF standard version 9.2. But now that is surrounded by dozens of other documents providing helpful guidance and advice on how you can make practical use of that TOGAF standard. We call this the TOGAF library. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, and I'm also going to talk about that term up in the top left, TOGAF series guides, in more detail as we move through this presentation. If you look at the TOGAF standard, and say, well, what has changed? Actually, the changes in the standard itself are relatively modest. That's why it's only version 9.2, not version 10 or version 2018 or what have you. The value, the extensive additional material that's been delivered has gone into this thing called the TOGAF library. Lots of guidance, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of more detailed guidance separated out into, in a structured way, that will help anybody who is adopting TOGAF to make the best use of it in their context. So let's go back to the standard itself. What has changed? In summary, there's been some significant change in the area of business architecture. We've done a lot of tidy up of the content meta model and framework. There's new material, more up-to-date material on security. We've aligned with the latest version of the ISO IEC IEEE standard. We've tidied up definitions, and as I've already said, we've started the process of the strategic restructure. In a one-hour webinar, I cannot describe every single change that has been put into the standard. Um, I did a presentation on that last week in London, and it lasted three and a half hours. I've had to leave something out. However, you can get a white paper, W182, which is an introduction to version 9.2, and includes a complete and exhaustive list of every change that has been um, put in. This is free of charge, and you can get it from the Open Group website in the publications area. 